My apologies for not starting the recording when I started the uh, the class. All right, I got the recording on now. All right, so we're back. Okay, it took profit on uh, one contract, and uh, probably it took us out out of the out of the other one for a break even. So the uh, trade, that trade, what did it do? We made six hundred and uh, twenty-five bucks on one contract, fifty bucks on the other. That's positive slippage on this one. The first entry was break even. So again, for those that are watching the recording and were not in the uh, when I opened the room, <clears throat> when I opened the room, I uh, clicked sell uh, to show how to trade off the chart. We did have two signals here, but um, it system canceled it. Then it broke, and I should have really gone in this trade down here you know why am i doing this well this is a discretionary trade obviously but i'm using the money management already built into the i newton um it's what i call gray box trading not black box so i want to take advantage of the momentum that we've been seeing in the afternoons um i have the s p ready to trade here but on the left the dow and the NASDAQ, this was prepared prior to me beginning the class where I ran some back tests for the afternoon trades, which I'll be showing you. And for those that are in trial, you get to see how to back test, you know, with the I Newton. So the uh, bottom line, the S&P is the only one that I had on. Uh, afternoon trades, I usually don't do till after two o'clock, but it's Friday. The markets have been volatile. They can tend to move early on Fridays, so that's why I went ahead and turned it on. That's where you see this vertical line. I turned it on a few minutes before opening the room at 11:55. A lot of volatility. You should whiten your stops. I haven't. I'm trading it just, you know, just the way it is. Uh, so that that trade didn't last too long, did it, guys? What was it? Uh, 12.07. That's not it. Yeah, 12.07, 10, uh, 12, 10, three minutes. We've got gold moving up. Yen moving up. Dollar moving up. Euro moving down. And there goes these guys. I'm going to go ahead and uh, sell it again. I've got 625 bucks of uh, profit to play with. Um, I don't know if there'll be any follow through here or not. The other thing you could also do in a fast market where you're just not getting the uh, a clear view is you can you can go to uh, a window with the chart trader on which I'll go ahead and do. I have it on another workspace and it'll automatically show you the, uh, where everything is, all your stops. Here it is. This will get stopped out. Yep. There it goes. So I just gave back what I made. It's a SIM account. I'm showing it to you to show you how to trade off the chart. The ideal trade was the first trade where it should have been way up here. All right, I'm going to go back and uh, review the uh, today's presentation. Uh, 
Uh, Shane is asking a good question. Is there a way to disable the break even? Uh, you'd have to go in and change the setting. Uh, you want to do the stop loss uh, only in the settings. Everybody see my screen? All right. So let's take a look, see what I've got ready for you today. All right, current trading environment. What, what we've seen for January, for January, choppy trading conditions. There's been intermarket relationships that have been in conflict, meaning there's there's been no leadership. Volatility has be has just it's just beginning to rise. When I was preparing this, now it's all full blown. Um, in January, we saw a lot of false moves. Transition, market sentiment shift. We're now going from conflict back into the markets being in sync. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Volatility continues. And I think right now there's a fight for leadership. And if you can handle the volatility and know how to trade with it, we should be seeing opportunities in the upcoming weeks and months. The, the biggest complaint that I got from our members not even our members, our, our new members, you know, for the last six months is that we have very little trades. System did real well. It did what it was supposed to do, but we didn't really have that many trades, not like the first half of the year. And that is because if the market environment, based on intermarket correlations, if it's not right, I knew it's just not going to give you that many signals. When everything's lined up, you're going to get a lot of signals. So I think we are in a, not only in a transition from market behavior, but also in a transition from a low trading count to a higher trading count with iNewton. All right, so what's the current trading environment? How did we get here? What is the market's message and what's really going on? Well, what we've seen is the bond market has had one opinion and the currency market has had a completely different opinion. The bond market's been hawkish as far as interest rates, interest rate yields. The currency market's been dovish. When we get two major markets, and by the way, the bond market's the... Uh, largest market in the world besides the currency market. Currency market is probably the largest because of global trade and so forth. But bonds are huge. And you've heard me say this many times throughout the years, and I just happened to hear it again on, on TV. Um, I forget his name right now, but there was a, a Clinton um, strategist political strategist, I forget his, his name, Carver, was it, out of New Orleans, who he was asked in an interview if he could come back in another life, who would he like to come back as? And he says, oh, I, I, I think this was the, uh, the sequence. He said, as the president of the United States, and he says, no, second thought, I'd like to be a baseball player with a batting average of 400 or 500. And he says, no, and, and second thought, I'd like to be the bond market. And the bond market can be very intimidating. It's a huge market. 
and your macroeconomic style of funds, including the big quant funds, at the center of everything is interest rates and the, and the bonds, okay? So they've been in conflict. So do we have a winner? Well, based on Friday's price action, it looks like the bond market won. Bonds are consolidating, or at least for now the bond market's winning. Bonds are consolidating after pointing to higher rates coming. Currencies are playing catch up to the prospect of higher rates. And that's one of the reasons why you've seen a nice bounce in the dollar. And bonds consolidating. Chasing the same signals. In the early stages of, of the financial crisis, 2007 to 2008, the superstar funds, the quant funds, racked up hefty losses within the first 10 days of August. These were not just random collection of hedge funds that had a bad month. These were a collection of the most prominent quantitative hedge funds, the ones that had, had stellar return year after year before the financial crisis. So what we learned was that these funds were basically in the same trade. Now remember, these funds, especially the quant funds, are very secretive. They don't, they don't disclose their strategy. So it was a mystery until, boom, the financial crisis hit. So the crowded trade effect. It's a theory based on an assumption that large quantitative trading institutions or large funds employ similar strategies. And in, in the case, looking back, we had Renaissance, probably the best known, D.E. Shaw, Goldman Sachs, and Highbridge. They were all in the same trade. So where's the focus right now? Well, right now it's interest rates. And then you can throw in a couple side notes. In the uh, interest rate debate, um, throw in their inflation. We have been asking and wanting reflation because we've been in such a low inflation environment. Central banks and the Fed has been wanting to see a better inflation, a target inflation. But if it gets, if it picks up too much momentum, well, then that's not a good thing. So you have some that are predicting that. Some are saying the Feds are behind the, uh, the rate curve. Now, with the new, um, uh, today, right, they passed the, the, the uh, new debt and so forth. It's, what, what's, it's ballooning the debt. Am I right on that? I don't have all the details yet. I've been trading all morning. But that also has some, potentially has some of the market participants saying, wow, the government's going to have to finance it. They're going to have to finance it with bonds. They're going to have to start providing a little bit better interest rate to attract buyers. David says budget deal 300 billion on top of the tax cuts. And then they want to do, they want to introduce next week, I think, uh, infrastructure. So what is this doing? Well, it's creating, in my opinion, going forward, volatility and different thoughts on the topics. The other talk among trading desks is some products blew up. The short volatility. ETF or ETN, I forget what, what exactly it is. But it, it's, an, it's a financial product. 
Um, one thing's for sure, there's deleveraging going on. But that at some point, it's going to stop. But I think volatility, not at the, not of what, not at the same level that we've seen or the same rate that we've seen this week. But I think volatility in general over the next 12 months is going to be higher than it was last year. And that's good for us. That's when I Newton can really do well. I think that's all that I have in this front. Any questions on this? Triggers. So I would pay attention. And by the way, this week, we hardly had any economic data. So going forward, I would pay a lot of attention to data, economic data releases. They're usually at 8.30, some are at 10. Any good or bad news out of, especially bad news out of the White House, the market's still vulnerable. Fed and central banks, if Europe in Asia, meaning Japan, if their economies or if their central bankers feel their economies are heating up, especially Europe, because they've always been afraid of inflation as enemy number one. So if they, if they see that and they start raising rates or, tight, or uh, tightening up, on their loose monetary policies, we could see a lot of action in the currency markets. Uh, Stephen says, increase in um, uh, volatility this week is great for iNewton, which is currency, bond, and equity index, commodities. Should we focus iNewton? Yes. What I would say, Stephen, is, is what I did this week in my live account is, I think it was Tuesday, I reduced the contract size. Wednesday, I went back to normal. Today, I just turned it off um, because... Oh, by the way, just the stock indices, not the others, just the stock indices. With this type of volume, not volume, uh, volatility, you need to do one of three things. Widen your stops, and I'm going to cover that. I'm going to show you on the charts. You either widen your stops, one, two, reduce your contract size, or number three, stay on the sidelines and wait for the what I call the K factor to come back to, to normal. Normal doesn't have to be, you know, um, a low volatility week. It just has to be the, the, you know, the average. All right. I think that's all I got for this presentation. Okay, so what's next? Vulnerabilities lead to opportunities. I'm going to show you how to look at where the vulnerabilities are. Uh, in our language, our insiders, our members, it's where is the risk, right? Where's, where's the risk? So you want to be able to identify where the risks are and lean towards the opposite. In other words, as the market what you want to do is identify crowded trades and then where's the risk? The risk is the unwinding. So you favor those trades. And they're fairly easy to spot. They're, they're not that hard. We do it every Monday in our, in our training session. And we do the forecasting for the week ahead. All right. Um, let me go back to the other. Any questions, please ask away. All right. This is, um, you know what? Let, what we can do right now is review the trades that we had this week. Um, and it's going to be easier to spot 
because I've had to turn my machine on a couple times, so I don't know if they'll be on this chart. Might have to go to the other charts where it keeps all the trades. Well, actually, I don't have enough data to show it. The fifth was the beginning of the month. Yeah, the fifth. So it's there. All right. So we started out with uh, this dollar doesn't count. It's not part of the uh, I Newton. I'm only going to review the uh, I Newton stuff. Uh, this is the fifth. This is Monday. I turned on the S and P for the afternoon. This was a, a pure, pure I Newton trade just for the afternoon trade. It took the trade at uh, one o'clock. It closed the first position, and this was only two contracts, and only trade four. Um, 300 profit target on the first one, and it did it in five minutes. Uh, the second one went on till uh, later on, uh, went on to the next day, the next morning, 3.56 a.m. for 4,000. Folks, I was up over eight grand at one time. In, in this position. So that's, that's, you know, that's what volatility can do. Um, had a couple net gas trades. This one was in the room. That's it's I Newton, but it's not part of our portfolio. Then gold. We had, this was a nice trade in the room and this is part of the portfolio. This is uh, gold. Uh, this is four contracts for you guys that are on trial. Yours, the defaults two contracts. So you had one at 800, you should have had one at $800 and the other one at 650. Then we had net gas in the room for 60 bucks. All right, this euro was the I Newton trade in the room. Uh, this was looking really, really good. And um, what normally happens at the Wall Street opening bell 9:30. You know they you, you got you got volatility. Most of the time it's it's just stocks. Um, that's why I'll show you in a little bit. We don't take any new positions in stocks from nine o'clock, and at 9:35 we start taking positions again. Signals. Uh, why? Because you could. You know, it could very easily get you in, and then all of a sudden, in 10 minutes, it could reverse, take you out, stop loss, and then it goes back in your direction. I mean, it just happens over and over. Um, but this week, because of the volatility of, of the stocks, it had a pretty good influence on the dollar and the currency markets, and we got we, we were up nicely, and then this thing came back and got out at break even. Uh, net gas loss. Then we had another euro trade. This one came within two ticks of taking profit, at least on the first position. Uh, same diff same thing. The open came and it rolled right back and got out at break even. This here, I'm going to show you what these trades are. These trades, this is afternoon trades, so it's not part of your default, you know, workspace. You won't see these. But I will show you how to do this if you wanted to add it. All right. So I traded the afternoon. I took off the um, the correlations. So if I would have left the correlations alone, I, it wouldn't have taken any losses. But it wouldn't have had any any wins either. All right. So this opened the trade at 313. And a minute later, it's, it gets stopped out. And this happened to the Dow. It happened to one of the S&Ps, but another Dow did work, and that ran up and made, uh, I think, two thousand dollars. So I started out with seven, 
seven grand of profits before the losses. So I gave back about a thousand, a little bit more than a thousand, like thirteen, fourteen hundred, and then made it back and then some after the uh, I'm sorry, right here. Right here. Any questions on this? All right, let me open up my Slack room where I posted these these pictures. Look look at this go. <laughs> and it's only 1236. There's going to be blood on the street today. I should probably open up a new chart and trade the the uh the Nasdaq. Let me try to do that. So all you got to do is um go to new chart where's my nasdaq pick your default any of them for that matter Where's my time? True. Change is 12. And I'm good to go. That's how quick you can open up one of these charts. All right, I'll put this on the side. I'm going to take the uh, correlations off because I want to be able to get in. I'll leave this up here. All right, let me show you what that trade looked like in the uh, in gold. Here it is. I'll get to uh, your questions in a minute. Let me try to get my drawing tool here. Here we go. So, um, whoops. All right, so here's the signal. It's a lower low. We had this break into the bear zone, stopped at our first support, consolidated, and actually it got into the trade here, and then it picked up steam, and it hit our profit target. I can't see it. It looks like somewhere around there is our first profit target. That's 80 ticks. That is the first profit target in the um, for for gold. Then the second contract is on what we call Lazy River. It's not this one, but it's very similar to this. And here's where it got out on on the other two contracts. Right about right there. And I think that was good for about 60 ticks, if I remember correctly. Now, if this would have continued down, it could have been a very, very large trade. Nonetheless, it's a pretty nice trade. It looks like these guys want to go again, huh?
All right, so let's take a look at, uh, okay, let me go through the questions first. Excuse me one minute. Uh, yeah, Rob, the, uh, the NASDAQ made a new low for sure. Steven says the S&P trade, the, the one I did on Monday, shouldn't have closed at four o'clock. No, I didn't have it set to close at the end of the day. I had it set up to close at the end of the week. But that that setting's open. You you, you know you could you could very well. Um, what is it? Twelve forty one. Yeah. Looks like it's getting ready to go. Anyways. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and look at the uh, the back test. This is the Nasdaq. Hey, boy, this Nasdaq's really looking good. I'm going to go ahead and – no, I'm not going to sell it. Let's go ahead with the class or else we'll be here all day. Um, we'll have another opportunity, I believe. All right, so this is the uh, – let's see, which one do I have on? All right, NASDAQ. NASDAQ, the dynamic trailing stop is at seven. The larger the number, the longer it could keep you in the trade if it continues in the trend. It is correlated, negative correlation with notes. So it's picking up risk on, risk off. It's not using the overnight filter. It starts at 7 a.m. Eastern. It stops taking signals at 9 a.m. Since these are five-minute bars, it can go to 9.05, okay? At 9.35, it starts up again, and then it won't take any signals after 10.45. This is the volume, the most volume when London overlaps the U.S. Um, you're trading uh, one contract each, each quantity. I've got uh, two because I'm trading a, you know, the, the account's grown. Looks like it's going to pick up steam. If the uh, Dow can break, then it should, they should all go. And there, there they go. It's going to be a bloodbath today, uh, which will make Monday very, very interesting. All right, back to um, back to the strategy. Now this setup is the same for all of the stocks. Okay, I just don't want to have a brand new position around the open. All right, so let's see what this looks like on a back test for going back one year. We traded this. These are not. These settings have not been changed. This has been the same for two years. So trading four contracts, 21,000. Trading two contracts, be, be happy, 11,000, which is still very, very good. The thing to take note here is profit factor, 3.44. It's very, very good. You should have two or better. This is what the graph looks like. Now, the reason why it goes sideways for a while is because there's no signals, or some of the signals are are dead. They're break-evens or a loss. Here are losses. These are just break-evens that the commissions eat you away. It's a swing trading model, so you got to you know you got to wait for it. It's not going to give you a swing trade every week, but when they do hit, they hit nicely. There's three thousand. You can see the losses are very small, so you can afford to accumulate some losses. Here's where uh, the markets just kind of die out. But then you get get the big ones. Here's some here's two nice ones in a row. Here's two nice ones in a row. And that's the strategy. Now, you can also add to trade this in the open. 
but you can combine it with another 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 one in case you're in it and it won't you're already open and you're not going to get another signal in the same in the same instrument so what you can do is trade the uh dow futures leave this one for for the morning session and then use the dow for the afternoon this is what the dow looks like trading both afternoon and day which that's probably the way that i would do it nice profit factor Equity curve is, is a little smoother. Now let's see what this looks like if I have it just in the afternoon. Well, I would have to turn this off. These are your operating modes, by the way. When you go live, when you want to trade live, you want the operating mode in um, uh, real tick, real time. Real time one tick. And you can only change this when it's disabled. So you disable it and you go real time. If you want to do back test, you change it to back test and you put true. Before I do that, let me check what I've got this on. So let me hit false. False, and let's say just to trade in the afternoon starting at 2 o'clock. None of this has been optimized, by the way. You guys are welcome to do it to do so if you want. Let's see what this would have looked like. Now, I've traded all these stock indices in the morning session for a long time, but I haven't traded the afternoon uh, except for a couple times, and it's recently. So take note of that. Uh, Mike, I only, because I have one with just the morning session, I have one with the afternoon. I don't have them both on at the same time. This market looks like it's going to keep going. Now, something else. Uh, data, when you download the workspace, all the charts are on five minutes. Five minutes back of data. You want to leave it like that. You don't. You don't want a 365 days. You only want to do that when you're back testing, and you want to do that one chart at a time. If not, it's going to really slow you down. And the way you do that is you right click, you go to data series, and right there you change it from five days to 365. Uh, which one was the second one, right? Did something wrong. Make sure I got the right one. Nope, it's this one. True. False, false. Dollar keeps rising with the bonds so there's a rotation out of stocks into bonds and into the dollar The yen is flying, and that's the unwinding of the carry trade. It's so clear for those that follow intermarket relationships. 
I'm going to show you guys that in a few minutes. That's going to be on the next training class. Uh, yeah, Stephen, you would widen your stop a little bit. Rob, they may have to. Some of those new funds may have to. So in the room with the default that everybody has on the on the uh, on the I Newton, we had three trades only this week. A real nice profitable trade in gold. Um, two break even trades in the euro, and that's it. All right, let's take a look at um, just the afternoon trade. I think it's this one yeah so 7,000 two contracts 313 so that's nice that's you know that that can smooth it's pretty smooth so you've got a couple options and this is one year back you got a couple options you can trade the Dow morning and afternoon or you can trade the nasdaq morning and the dow on the after morning and afternoon and i'd rather do that because if you get into a trade in, in the nasdaq and two o'clock comes and you're still long or short it won't open a new position so what i would do is i would trade NASDAQ morning session with the Dow afternoon session. And I might do that for the new portfolio that we're going to put together over at uh, at the brokerage firm for the, the broker that trades on our uh, client behalfs, customer behalf. Rob, sometimes it will short or go long on a retrace, but some markets no. <clears throat> some markets yes in fact the um, overnight range works with the euro so technically the euro's got to be closed got it's got to be inside the overnight range which would not be a breakout or very close to it to take a trade So, for example, I'll go ahead and um, show you what I mean. It picks up short-term consolidation. So those consolidations, in other words, uh, an instrument can break down, run back up, consolidate, and then attempt to go again. It, it will get you in. It doesn't have... It, doesn't necessarily wait for a lower low or a higher high. On some markets, it works better. I have it programmed that way in the S&P, but I have the opposite in, in the euro. Reason being, euro is active during the London session, European session. And then it slows down, and then it'll either pick up, and it retraces a lot, and then it'll either pick up or not during our session. So that's, that's what it's designed to do. So let me uh, go to um, the euro. All right. So this is how, this is how you want to do a back test. Now that I'm I'm doing it here. So you 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 disable it. You change it to back test. You hit true. 
And now remember, I only have five days of data. So now what I want to do is, oh, and by the way, the uh, one quick way to know whether you're live or whether you're on back test mode is that the back test mode, you don't have the action buttons. Real live, you do have action buttons. All right, so now what I want to do, now that I got the strategy on, is change it from five days to 365 days. But I'm not going to do that. I only want to show you this week's trade. So I'm going to put 30 days. So what I want to really show you more than anything else are the trades, the um, overnight filter. Here we go. All right. Uh, let me explain to you how this works. These dots is picking up the range from overnight and on this machine I have 2 o'clock 2 a.m. somewhere back in here was was the uh, range at 2 o'clock oh, I take it back that's not here back here there and there so in order for a signal to qualify assuming all the other algos are lined up is uh, this dotted line is X ticks minus or plus the overnight range so the overnight range bottom is here, the top is here. I have it five ticks below. So the signal has to occur inside, inside of these lines. The signal. Okay, this would not have qualified. These would have. So sure enough, you can see, and by the way, the, the uh, signals... is these short these dash marks so it went short it came within one this is the first profit target here's the second it came within one tick of profit target and it came back uh, to get out of break even ran up and that was it This one didn't work, but at least it wasn't a loss. The stop loss was here. It went far enough to relocate the um, to relocate it. So that's the way that one works. Um, I believe it's uh, the S and P's just the opposite. We'll only take a um, a lower low. Not a lower low. It has to be, uh, the signal has to be lower than the overnight range. But the overnight range in the um, S&P goes back to 5 o'clock p.m. prior day. It's a lot of information I've just given you. I hope I didn't confuse anybody. Uh, some quick features of the system. This is just a trend line that I drew. Don't worry about that. The chart's divided up into a uh, bull zone, a bear zone, and no trade zone. These dashed green marks, this is the bull zone. The beginning of the bull zone marks the bull zone. This marks the bear zone. There's no trades in the middle. Um, 
in order for a short, these are velo this is a RQ motion uses our uh, proprietary velocity indicator. So for shorts, they all have to be red. You won't get signals here. For longs, they all have to be green. And down here, you'll have one or two of your correlations filters. And that's a whole different topic that I'm going to cover in another training session. We've, we're, we've reached our hour. I don't like to keep it longer than an hour. So this is recording. This is recorded, rather. So uh, you can go back and uh, check it. If there's any doubts on anything, just watch the video again. These are action buttons you can do on the chart. I already showed you how to do that. You can turn the motion on or off, the uh, correlation on or off. You can cancel an order. Uh, you can buy or sell off the chart. You know, I just did. And you can close it. You can uh, turn the system on or off. Um, now, performance on the site. We had a January was a little tough, really not that, wasn't really that bad. I think it was a 2.5% drop, uh, but we're doing real good this month. Yeah, it only takes one or two trades. Um, the losses are, are small, but the profits on a couple of these instruments can be pretty big. That's, you know, that's just the way the, the risk reward and, and the, the, the math uh, is programmed into into the money management part of the of the strategy. Uh, this gets updated every two or three days. Um, I think the I have to update today's today's trades. Um, this is a hundred percent black box. This is the the gray box is the trade lab, but this is all black box. No interference from me whatsoever. And it doesn't include like these afternoon trades that I've done this week. It does not include that. This is 100% black box. And let's see what were the last trades posted. The last trade was the gold trade. And you can see the trades in January. They're not that large, you know. Now, we, we went from trading two contracts in 2017 to four contracts in uh, 2018. So, the, you know, it's, it's a, the account's grown. And mid-year, I'll probably go up to six contracts if the equity curve continues to go up. Any questions? Henrik, did you have some questions? I'm going to share with you guys the settings for these, for the afternoons. I know, I know a lot of you guys want to trade the afternoon. I'll check my email and get back to you, Henrik. Um... Patience. This is with this system. You do you do need a little bit of patience because if the markets are are not friendly, if the you know the system's designed to gather data, and there's a formula in the system that making it simple. I'm trying to put it in simple terms. Um, will conclude in real time. Not conclude, but it it will filter in real time whether the market and dynamically by the way whether the market is friendly for our style of trading or hostile and a hostile environment just won't take any trades 
In a friendly environment, it'll take trades. And the markets have been hostile. Oh, I know what I wanted to show you guys. Uh, Steven saying for the afternoon, S&P 500 trade, do you have it to close it? No, no, Steven, I have it open. It won't close at four. You can change the setting. All the settings are open if you want, if you want to change it. All right, let me go back to my uh, PowerPoint. Uh, here it is. Okay. This is a uh, correlations chart. And this is this is from the election. You can see stocks took off at the beginning. Uh, the dollar took off and the risk off assets came down as there was problems with the White House. You know, you saw retracements. Uh, the liquidity trade, however, kept the uh, S&P just, you know, keep roaring. So you have the S&P going up because of the liquidity trade. You have it going up because of the Trump trade. This is where we got the, uh, I believe it was right around here. Or is it here? This was uh, the tax reform. And it just kept going. But the dollar and the bonds, here are the bonds, should be going opposite. That's your more of your norm. You can see down, you can see up. You can see more up, more down. You see up, you see down. Okay, that's perfect. Negative correlation. But right around here, the last week of December, and gold's supposed to trade with it, with bonds. Last week of December, going into January, is the US dollar. And these are bonds. Guys, that's not the norm. That is the canary in the coal mine. I Newton is designed to pick up these rotation flows that have that through our data mining over, the, over a long extended period of time, um, which is designed to pick up institutional activity, is telling us that the institutions are not in sync. Bond markets telling you one thing, currency markets telling you something else. Sooner or later, they're going to come back in sync and there's going to be a winner, and there's going to be a loser. And then look and then look at uh, gold. This is out of whack. Hence some losses for um January, but more than anything, it was a lack of trades. There was just a lot of break-even trades. And now that things are going back to their norm, I expect a friendlier trading environment. And let me show you where that is happening. At the beginning, there's going to be a... Um, you know, the dollar has to play catch up, so they could continue in the same direction, but eventually they'll they'll split apart. And you hear, here you've got gold coming down with bonds. That's the norm. That's the norm. Uh, now, I have another update, I believe. I believe I do. Yeah, here's here's a short... Those were daily. That was based on daily. This is based on 30-minute chart, I think. 240-minute chart. So you can see dollar down, dollar down, and bonds down. And this is as of, uh, I think, Friday. But the good news is that now, once the dollar catches up, then you'll see more of this between the dollar and the bonds. Let me uh, look for something.
Let's see where the loss was. The loss was in the euro for January. The euro, the S&P 500, the yen, and that's it. So the um, the euro, the euro and the yen are not part of the are not part of the. Um, risk on risk off class but the system did a great job of staying out of the market these are very little trading what happens is that a lot of these a lot of these because it's uh four contracts now you know that's 40 bucks it shows up as a negative once you add the uh ten dollars round turn commission it doesn't show up here it shows up over here All right, I'm done. So I'll see, I wish everybody a happy weekend. It looks like uh, stocks want to go back down. We'll do a training session again next week, at the beginning of the week. Any questions uh, come up in the meantime, send me an email. I'll be checking my emails over the weekend. All right, everybody, stay safe, enjoy the weekend. Bye now.